Mm -hmm. I'll call the uh, Waterworks and Lighting Commission meeting to order. Uh, first thing on our agenda is uh, the approval or additions or corrections to the regular commission meeting held on November 8th. I make a motion to approve the uh, minutes as presented. You do. <laughs> <laughs> we got a big job today. <laughs> yeah. um, all in agreement, please say aye. Aye. Okay, uh, event number 2.2 is special commission meeting held on November 15th, 2017. I'd make a motion to approve that as written, presented. Okay, we have a motion by Rick. I'll second it. <laughs> um, all those in agreement, please say aye. Aye. Okay, number three is a camera system demonstration. Working on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Technical <Early>. difficulties. <laughs> uh, Wait, let's call the IS guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, Department Update Safety Committee, any comments on safety minutes? Uh, if not, the line superintendent report. Assuming those are squirrels? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? Okay, you know, if not, how long do the water department operate? The question, Dale, on the, the break, the water break. So when that happens, who's who does the resurfacing of the street? Um, we take that into the springtime and summer, we'll have that resurfaced. Okay. Have a contractor come in and do the rock top work, we prep it, and then they okay. do the work. I saw they put up, and it was rough, and they put a bump sign out there or whatever. And then do we have on the water, the water um, donations? That was really cool to see that. Um, but I don't, I don't believe that the utility gets um, enough recognition for all of the water donations. Is there, do you guys, I know, I know you guys keep like a log, right, of all the water donations. Is there some way maybe in Joel in the newsletter or something, some way we can you know, let people know how much water is, is funny given. You should, <laughs> funny you should bring that up. Dale has got a little show and tell today for you. All me. right. <laughs> oh, the plaque. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, we had a visitor last week, actually two board members from the uh, Honor Flight board stopped by and presented us with the commission with a plaque. It reads, Waterworks Lighting Commission of Wisconsin Rapids for quenching the thirst of our honored veterans with their bottles with your bottle of water on flight day, you've truly made a difference. So I just hear we can hang up some words <laughs> in the building, and whether it be in a lobby where people can see it more, or wherever and, you like. It. And yes, we did post that on Facebook. Okay, okay, that was great. Well, Tom, did you get a, did you get a, you got that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Dale, do you have a, do you have a log of who we've donated to? I keep track of how much school is worth, you know, most, 99% of it's on there. There's some that show up unexpectedly, they don't get put on it, but for the most part, they do okay, have it. with Dale and see what we can come up with. Yeah, I mean, so I know personally the big water donation for the, um, the summer picnic, the community picnic, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't know that the utility gets uh, recognition for all of that. <clears throat> well, like, a lot of times we'll get, uh, I'll get a letter or a follow-up card from the people we yeah. donated it to, but we don't typically publicize it, no. yeah. but so something we can take a look at. I guess the biggest, the biggest thing I like to keep stressing to people is to help them to sell it, to help raise money for the organization rather than just using it for a, a get-together or some nature oh, right, like that. Right, you know? So right. we do get that sometimes, but... Right. All right, um, office manager's report. So is that apartment complex? Are they are they renting? Is it is it ready to go or? I don't know if they're renting or not, but uh, the meters went in. Okay. 
Is that the apartment that's kind of attached to um, the um, uh, old age home or whatever on the... No, I believe this is um, on like the southwest corner of 16th and Two Mile. It's like okay. a three or four story yes. unit. They built that They're big stormwater retention pond right there okay. as well. All right. But I, but I always thought that was right almost adjacent on Whitrock. There's a nursing home, and I thought that was part of it. On the other it, side there, you yeah, mean? It is. That, that could be. It is. There's some common Arbor Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, Arbor Wood, I believe that's it. They've been building it for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, know. <laughs> I know, that's why I was interested to see if there were actually <laughs> people in there yet or not. I don't believe there are yet, but it's obviously getting close. Okay. And I see you put on the, uh, on the water bill tax roll. You have transferred to the tax rolls. Yes. And uh, why well, everything from 13 to 19 or 2017, it uh, you know really came down in the uh, you know, unpaid balances. So you need the transfer. And I take it most of the transfer to the tax rolls are probably be the landlords. Yes. <clears throat> According to this, they should be twice as happy, <laughs> or half as sad. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and, and John isn't here, so I'm obligated to commend you for the accounts receivable work. Thanks, Rick. I'll pass it on to the staff. <laughs> they do the heavy lifting on all that. Anything else? If not, Director of Finance Report. Second paragraph on reviewing the water utility income statement, and I believe that um, you're saying that the negative remaining budget and customer accounts expenses is what the city owes us, so, so that we transfer. Right. So you know, when we do the budget every year, we take into account the amount that um, the city is going to pay for those costs. Yeah. So the budget might only be you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars but at this point in the year, we can't make that adjustment until a year-end adjustment happens. Okay. So we go over the budget then with the year-end entries when we credit those expenses and um, kind of get that budget. And those are like direct, are those like direct payments they make to us or yes. is that off a of pilot? No, it's actual direct payments they make to us. Okay. Comment on our low electric rates residentially in the state? Uh, I was ready to report. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to see that, but 14. 14. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's really good. Matt, are you? I'm ready now. Yeah. <laughs> that works out good because uh, it's your report. So <laughs> <laughs> So early this year, we started replacing all the, the video surveillance cameras. We started planning uh, back in February, and then um, got the project pretty much started about mid-summer, uh, getting everything, all the parts in, getting everything ready to install, and then we got it installed in September. Uh, so just wanted to show you what we did, and 
What I'm going to show you is the old system with the old cameras. We still have that up and running in, in most places. Uh, some of the old cameras were removed to, to fit the new ones in. But then, uh, then I'll go into the new system and, and some of the differences, and you're going to see the quality difference in the, in the video itself. So this is the old system. Um, the only way to change which cameras you're looking at, you actually have to come in here. You've got to pick one of these cameras, and you've got to drag it over and drop it in there. So that was one of the shortcomings. You had to figure out, well, which camera was it, and, and which one do you need, and, and all those different things. And then take a look at the video quality, especially in the background. Um, it's all pretty fuzzy, and it's not just because of the snow. <laughs> So here's the, the parking lot view. These are some views I'm going to show you in, in the new system. Um, the playback feature, yeah, it pretty much doesn't work. If I was to actually launch this, it would crash the whole program. Well, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the only way we could really get video off of it if we needed it was to go to the actual equipment itself, which is down by uh, Jeff's office there, and, and stand there and go through the video and save what we need. So it was time to replace the old system and, and get some new cameras and some new software in place. So um, Access Communications, very large uh, video surveillance uh, vendor out there. They, they resell through hundreds of places, including Amazon and, and Walmart. And, and then for business purposes, it's a different quality of camera, which is what we had installed. As you can see, um, we actually have views down here now. So we can go ahead and preset views for different areas. And as you can see, Todd, Todd's been playing around trying to set some stuff up for himself as well. <laughs> so uh, we're able to actually install the software on any number of computers we need to. Um, I think we've got about six installs right now. Uh, the old system, we only have one license. We can install it on one computer, and that's the only way we can get to it. Um, the new system also gives us the ability to black out certain areas. So this is just a computer screen. We black it out just for you know, uh, personal information to keep that private from the video. Just in case somebody needs to see the video, we got to send a recording somewhere they can't see the private customer information if it was up on the screen. So you just blacked out that particular portion of the view? Yep, and I did it on this one as well. We had two more computer screens over here. Okay. The downside is you can't see Jerry's head when he's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, you could, you could uh, zoom in on those particular areas well enough that you could read the computer screen? Uh, yes, you can. You can actually zoom right in on there. In the old system, we didn't have that ability, but in the new system, we do. So to show you the difference, and these are all live right now? These, this is the live view, correct. Um, this is one of the views we looked at earlier. You remember how fuzzy this was? Now it's clear. Well, there's still snow. It is still snow, but it's not fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, it's on my screen too. <laughs> and this is that same parking lot view that we were looking at earlier. All the cars are clearly defined. Um, there's no, no fuzziness to the end. So what went into I, so are all the are all the camera stations the same as the previous ones or no there's some differences we actually moved them around a little bit to get different views because um, we saw what worked with the old cameras and their positioning uh, there was actually some areas <coughs> we had like this camera right here so we did we did have a camera on the corner of the building right over here. Uh, we actually eliminated that because of the quality of these cameras and the detail you can get from them. We only needed the one camera. We didn't need them both. So we were able to eliminate some cameras here, and then we were able to put cameras out at the substations and the wells. And are any of these required for, like, you know, online security? I think, I think what's going to happen in um, the NERC requirements is that the substations will eventually need to have that security. So we're probably a year or two ahead of the game again by having this in place. So. And you have these at the substation? Too? Yeah, so right here's all the substations. Oh, there there yeah. Cool. yeah, so those are all live shots at the subs and um, 
with the fiber backbone that we put in for the SCADA system, we just hopped on that. So that allowed us to be able to gather all this information. Yes. Is there a, uh, in the evening, is it to have a night view? Yeah, these are all night vision capable. Okay. All of them out at the, the sites and all of them outside, including some of the inside ones where there's no light. <coughs> I see. So from a substation standpoint, are you, are you, are you monitoring for, for security reasons or operational or both? Um, mainly for security. Remember last year we had the fence at the west sub get cut and then material was stolen from it. So this should help us at least see who did it if it does happen again. Um, it's awfully handy too, you know, uh, like Matt, Dale and I, we are on a security list. So if uh, a lot of these doors have alarming and so if a door goes um, into alarm and let's say it's, you know, two in the morning, the security company is calling one of us to ask, ask what we're supposed to do about it. And like I can pull all these cameras up from my house. So that would eliminate us having to have somebody come in and take a look at something. So. Does it come up on your phone also? Uh, we can make it work on the phone, yeah. but right now it's just on my Surface at home. He has a tablet at home that he did. Yeah, okay. But yeah, all these cameras are night vision capable. The snow doesn't help. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was the other thing. The other advantage was we're, we're now able to use phones or tablets to be able to pull these up off-site. Um, I did get in contact with the police and the fire department to see if they were interested in, in having it loaded on one of their PCs at, at their location, and neither one of them has gotten back to me so far, so I'm not sure where that's going to go. You know, the cameras and the technology, uh, there was a, I don't know if it language or whatever, but there was a, a state uh, push, somebody was pushing at the, at the state level to have like certain security systems in all convenience stores, and then there was some backlash from convenience stores or whatever. I, um, I'm assuming with the latest technology that this would, if that would filter in, that this would be compliant with that. Yes, it would be, yeah. yeah. But I don't know it. I think NERC is going to have probably stricter restrictions yeah. than any state law would have, okay. at least on the electric side. But they don't have it yet? Is it no. Saying? Okay. No, it, it, Last few conferences I've gone to, that's been the hot topic yeah. is the, that extra layer of security that they are going to start enforcing. And they haven't so, been talking so much as if it's going to happen as when. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All those cameras, too, and Matt probably will get into this, <coughs> they have motion capture recording. So okay. any type of motion that occurs, they start recording at that moment or a few seconds prior to that moment, right? Right. They and actually pre buffer. So they pre both in five seconds, and then they'll start recording actually three seconds prior to motion, and then they'll stop recording five seconds after the motion. So um, that's for the deer hunters, or? <laughs> well, we do have a skunk in the west sub that we've caught. Uh, really? Right, uh, really? <laughs> and we're, we're trying to catch that guy. I've seen him run around. <laughs> I don't think we've seen him in the winter yet. But. That's pretty Yeah, cool. so the reason these are, um, playing right now is because they see motion. And if you look down here, you'll see that the motion actually stops at some point. Each, all this red is actually a recorded video. So, and unfortunately, the amount of snow affects the motion detection, so it thinks there's motion out there when actually it's just snow. Um, we'll go to the let's go to the here, here. So these are a couple of the garage views. Uh, that we currently have. As you can see, there's no motion at height. So if we were looking for something, we'd look for a red <coughs> segment somewhere in this time frame, and that's where we would be looking to see what happened or, or what's going on. Um, yeah, I always wondered about that on these old systems, how if something happened during the night and you had a camera, how you have to go through all that tape. Tape, I would yeah. imagine. That's pretty neat. Feature. Yeah, so you'll see him walk off the screen and then you'll see it go down. It'll wait five seconds and then it'll turn off. And it'll wait for the next movement. So here, it started recording a few seconds before. See Randy Rizicki walking into work. 
and then once it goes off screen, it will it'll stop recording. That also saves space because we have to store all this video. So we have all cameras set up on motion detection. And for how long? How long do you have to store? Uh, there's no real precedent for it. Um, right now, I'm shooting for 12 months. And at the rate of record, I think we're going to get closer to two years worth of video before it starts overwriting itself. Okay. Um, the other features we were looking for is. is I'll just show them a well. Yeah. Uh, the other feature we were looking for is license plate readability. So we had to buy actually a special camera for. We have a Dropbox out here that's pointed directly at. Or the camera's pointed directly at, and we're able to zoom in and actually read a license plate. Uh, yeah, so each one's labeled. As you can see, it's not just cam one, cam two, cam 15, whatever it is. Each camera is labeled. And we have 30 cameras, so that makes it a lot easier to move about. see it from here but if they tried to get in the building the door is actually right here and we made sure all the cameras were positioned that way so that they're right at that entry door in case someone tried to get into the building and then with the camera quality you can actually you know if there was something you know we could send it to the police and they could actually pull up a pretty good video <laughs> and that's pretty much all I had, unless you guys want to see something specific. Any other questions of Matt? No, I, I want to ask Todd, does this mean you're going to retire from on-the-spot picture taking now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Uh, I have one, well, not on the uh, camera system, but on your AMI communications upgrade. Uh, I see you're still, you and US Cellular are still talking about that. We actually have a meeting. It was supposed to be tomorrow, but they pushed it up and we're going to have it this afternoon right after the function. Because they are the second uh, cellular company that I've talked to. Them. Are they not? No, nope, they're the first. They're the first, yeah. Yeah, they're the only ones I've worked with so far on that project. <clears throat> but yeah, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about, because um, they finally finished their solution um, for this, for the connection between us and them, Okay. and the way they want us to set it up, yeah, I'm not happy with it. So we're going to talk about equipment needs, you know, they're saying we need a bunch of extra equipment to get the connection up and running, and I don't agree with that. So that's what we're going to sit down and talk about today. Good. Nice job on the project. Thanks. Any other comments uh, on that? If not, we'll go to the conservation manager's uh, report. Thanks, Matt. Sean, on the uh, uh, the savings for the church, um, so did they did they initiate that, or how how was that initiated? Um, they are hired. They hired Schneider Electric, who is subcontracted. They contact us with a letter of authorization. 
to look to see if there is would be a, a savings Same. benefit. Okay. And in this case, after um, looking at whether a time of day option right. would benefit them, right. there was a 23% savings, so quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Is that a service that Schneider Electric sells that they go in and help you on your rate? Yes, we're 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 seeing. I, I probably come across several companies that hire them. Okay. Um, but they're, you know, instead of going through us, they have decided to contact Schneider Electric. They're the ones that I usually receive the letter of authorization from. Um, so we're we're getting a few customers. Usually, I'm seeing it on the smaller businesses that are subcontracting Schneider to be their. Um, to look at their billing, yeah. contact the utilities. Uh, the industrial side of things, usually you have someone internally that's looking at that. Um, however, Schneider Electric does also is uh, contracted by Ocean Spray as well. Okay. And so they they send I send over low profile data at an annual basis okay. to them for Ocean Spray. But we're seeing a lot of smaller customers using them. I would think a church is a you know, review their rates, like you said, they're going to time of day, that would, you know, church standing still for a long period. Yeah. There's got to be some things that they can do. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially with high energy use on yeah. weekends. Yeah. Like uh, off peak. Right. Makes sense. Sundays being off peak right. is where that benefits them, where you see that 23% kick in. Yeah. And can you, I'm not sure what the, Regulations are or whatever, but can you mention who those other two solar customers are? The the two solar customers that are over the twenty kW would be McMillan Library <coughs> and the, and the and the high school. High school, right? Yes, they are our largest solar arrays. They are over twenty kW. One's ninety six, and the other one's uh, McMillan's one hundred fifty seven. <coughs> <clears throat> Any other questions? If not, the director of the engineering and electric operations report. Todd, I see your list of uh, 2017 projects is only four and a half pages, so that's you know. We'll work on five next year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very proud of the staff. I thought we had a great year as far as the amount of projects that we were able to accomplish. And I, I know they'll benefit the electric system greatly. So, I thought you, you, on one of your projects, the 17th Avenue North conversion, and uh, you know you talked about a lot of lines, and I think that was the one where it was kind of a safety hazard to work on one because there was another charged line real close. Yes. Is that where a lot of your capital projects are, are geared to where there's multiple lines and trying to yeah. get that underground? Probably about two years ago, MEUW was uh, giving one of their safety classes here to our linemen and they were saying that a lot of the incidents where people are electrocuted or hurt happen because you have multiple three-phase lines stacked on top of each other and we have that in various locations in the city and so that kind of geared me towards when we're redoing these lines figuring out different ways to get get around that and yeah when we redid pepper just recently we converted it to underground in some locations and then we eliminate eliminated one of the two lines by going with a heavier conductor and so, and if you look at next year's projects, uh, we're concentrating a lot of uh, things on 16th Street. Same idea uh, where we have double lines just like outside our door here uh, to get away from that safety issue. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I know uh, real by the, is that first street by the expressway? Yeah. You took all, straightened all those lines out and took a lot of, I think there's some underground over there. Yep, yeah, that's a, very congested area because um, we got feeds that come from across the river and they meet up with the feeds on this side and it allows us to feed the hospital from two locations if we had to but all at once you have a lot of lines in a small yeah. footprint. Yeah, so. that, that was a yeah. little Christmas tree over there with yeah. all the lines around. Yep.
Any other questions, comments? If not, the general manager report. Um, but I know you, you submitted the uh, our budget for the finance committee. Was there a lot of questions about it? Or there was several questions at finance committee. I don't think actually at council, but there were some good questions just with respect to the capital and the differences between our budget and theirs and, and how it all works. So yeah, there was interest there. And you, oh, go ahead. Well, with the two linemen going to Manitowoc, that doesn't That doesn't put us in danger of our of so those are those are we could spare that? Yeah, we get it back in a couple hours if we need it. Okay. All right. I think he's requested an additional time, so we'll check with the guys and see if anybody's interested in doing that because the first two are gonna time out actually tomorrow. Um, but if there's no interest, then he'll be on his own. <laughs> Did the mayor ever give you another amount that he would kind of want for the project? Uh, no, I think we'll agenda that probably sometime in January to talk about it. I mean, his initial request was, was significant. I mean, in the email that he sent to me. So, mm -hmm. um, the initial request was kind of new. So we'll just have to, thankfully that's a commission decision. <laughs> keep me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be both uh, sometime probably early mid-January we'll agenda both that and the alleged request. All right, uh, review of accounts payable. back to the earlier discussion on the um, on the water donations because um, do we know what the value to the utility you know what it costs per correct bottle yeah. or case or yeah it's, uh, yeah we have to get a bottle so we know what the costs are to do that yeah, yeah. because I think that's another misconception that it's free you know right. it's right. not free it's right. correct right Typically, that's the line that's mm -hmm. on the uh, that advertising means? expense on the water income statement. Yeah, that's the advertising, that's the advertising oh, expense portion of it. Dale had chimed in; it's about seven dollars a case. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, tower inspection is ninety-four thousand. That's our annual payment we make for the three water towers. Um, we contract out the service and then they take care of all the repairs and they took care of the painting on the South Water Tower this summer. But um, that's a big portion of that cost when they come up with what that annual maintenance cost is. It's just the cost to repaint. I take it every, every year or whenever they're inspected, there's always some type of repair needed. It comes in handy not having to pay it up front every time. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? No, I'm running out of film. All right, then um, what we need is somebody to make a motion to adjourn. I shall move to adjourn. Okay, I'll second. All in agreement?
Hi. Thank you.